Whether you're trying to stay fit or shed a few extra pounds, running has always been a popular exercise. One of its many benefits is that you can easily track your progress by the distance you're able to run. Maybe at first you want to run around the block, then a mile, a 5K, a half marathon, and possibly even a marathon. But imagine if your goal was to run across the United States of America. A Purdue professor not only imagined it, but did it, and collected some interesting research on the way. This was a, an epic challenge. It was a monumental challenge. We started in Huntington Beach, California on January 16th. We had 12 runners, um, ranging in age from 30 up to 73. We were running a marathon, a little over a marathon, so about 26.4, 26.5 miles a day for nearly five months. So we, it took us about four and a half months to cross the country. We took a southerly route from Huntington Beach and then came up the Atlantic seaboard to finish in Washington, D.C. We all completed about a little over 3,100 miles. So Race Across the USA was a, a race put on by a nonprofit to raise money for a charity called the 100 Mile Club. It was founded in the early 90s trying to incentivize kids to run or walk 100 miles over the course of the school year. The outreach we were trying to do for the charity was to not just ra raise attention and, and some money for the charity, but to inspire kids to become a little more active. So our race directors scheduled talks with a lot of elementary schools and some middle schools and high schools along the way. That was a really special opportunity, I think, for all of us to get in and to be able to speak with the kids and kind of feed off of their energy. It made the runs that day and the day after and even the week after that much easier. You're, just, you're still running off the high of being with the kids. So I was an assistant professor in the Department of Anthropology at Purdue, where my specialty was in human evolution and nutrition. I guess the interest that I had in doing the research on this run was that I was looking at kind of big picture questions of how humans adapt and use food to adapt to novel stresses. And the runners over the course of this race were gonna be undergoing a pretty severe stress. The daily routine was basically wake up, packing up all your stuff, whipping some breakfast together really quick. We would usually start the run at eight o'clock and you finish as fast as you're able. So for me, that meant most days I was done running around 12, 1230. The routine that we had to go through every day to continue doing what we were doing was um, certainly monotonous <laughs> um, and relentless. And we certainly had a lot of challenges come up along the way. I anticipated we'd be running through some cold, some cold stretches, but running in freezing rain into a 20 mile an hour headwind, that was a real exercise in misery management. Like, I've never in my life, I think, been so focused on living one moment at a time. Like, what we were going through that day was just too hard to think even five minutes down the road or a minute down the road. Another unanticipated challenge was, you know, getting sick. But I caught a stomach flu um, as we were just starting into Mississippi. And about one mile into the stage, um, I just started feeling really nauseous and weak. Then as soon as I tried to start taking sips from my, from my sports drink, it was like, you know, getting sick in the bushes, go a little bit further, sick in the bushes. And it's just like, you know, whenever you feel, whenever you get the flu, you know, you get the chills and you feel achy all over. I mean, most people don't want to climb out of the bed. And I certainly would have been in that place, but I had to run a marathon that day. I mean, we didn't have to complete it, but we had committed to completing this challenge of getting all the way across the country and not missing a stage and not missing a mile. And so when you're, you've set out to do that and you've committed to it, there are no alternatives. You just gotta get up and do it. So the big picture questions I was interested in engaging with this research project was, how do humans adapt in general to environmental stress? We can look at that from a few different perspectives. One of the things that makes humans fairly unique as a species is that we adapt not just biologically to environmental stress, but we adapt behaviorally and culturally as well. And so we wanted, with the research program, we wanted to put together a data collection protocol, a system in place where we could collect behavioral data as well as biological data. Most of those data collection protocols were front-ended, so were collected in Los Angeles and Huntington Beach right before we started, and then collected again at the back end in Washington, D.C. after we finished. 
some of the behavioral data we collect throughout. So we ask the runners to fill out daily questionnaires. I imagine that in the next couple months, we'll probably see some of the initial results of those analyses coming out. Uh, and then I would hope that we can start to get some of these results published, certainly within, within the year. I think one of the surprises or lessons that I, that I learned is how malleable and subjective perception is. In the first couple weeks of the race, we were going uh, through the desert in Southern California. And there was one stretch where uh, we, you know, we, we passed this sign that says, no services next 100 miles. So, <laughs> so you knew there wasn't gonna be a whole lot of scenery, with, at least with regards to like human built structures. And I'm looking around going, this is gorgeous. You know, it's, it's huge, it's vast, it's barren. Like there's nothing here, but there's beauty in that. And that was very much my perception for a few days. But then there was one day where I think I didn't bring as much food with me on the run. So I was getting in a little bit of a funk because I didn't have enough energy. And I'm looking around at this exact same landscape I've been running through the last, you know, several days and been really high on. And now I'm thinking, God, it's vast and endless and depressing and boring. It's the exact same landscape, but my perception of it was very different. And it was entirely dependent on my state of mind. And I think the lesson I learned from that was, if I'm gonna get through this thing, this race across the US, I need to foster a positive mindset. I need to be really active in pursuing that positive mindset and holding on to it. Happiness is a choice. And I think that's a lesson I'll take with me probably for the rest of my life. Prior to the Race Across USA, Professor Carlson had competed in over 40 marathons and 40 ultramarathons, including what's considered the most difficult and competitive ultramarathon in the world, the Spartathlon. He finished the 153-mile run from Athens, Greece to Sparta in 32 and a half hours and was the second American male to cross the finish line. 